for top of the hour. So thanks a lot, everybody, for joining in tonight. This is our Thursday night call. Um, as many of you know, um, every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, myself and Michael Quatch will do um, a, a product and science call. Sometimes it's both of us like it is tonight. Sometimes it's just me. Sometimes it's just Michael, really depending on, you know, what else is going on. You know, we have, we're growing like crazy here at Amari. We're trying to spread the word to as, to as many people as possible. So sometimes we divide and conquer and, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, here we are the last day of April. It's April 30th. Um, the month of April has been stress, stress awareness month. And so all of our themes have really been focused on some aspect of stress. So uh, this past Tuesday, we talked about cellular stress. Tonight, we're going to talk about how the microbiome, how the bacteria in your gut modulate stress throughout the body. Um, and so, you know, like I said, the, you know, the two pre presenters tonight are going to be myself, uh, Dr. Sean Talbot. I'm the chief science officer here at Amare, and Michael Quatch. He is the, the linchpin in our, uh, our product education team. Uh, just a little bit about me for, you know, because sometimes these product and science calls are sometimes the first uh, like exposure for a lot of people to Amari. Um, this is a place where people are, are curious about the products and how they work and what they do and what our sort of story is around the science. This is a great place to plug them in. You know, we do this every Tuesday, every Thursday, and it's a great place for people to hear sort of an overview of what we're what we're doing here from a, from a product side. But so um, a little bit about me before we get into, into the products. I'm a nutritional biochemist. That's what my PhD is in. And so a lot of the things that I talk about are obviously biochemical in nature. You know, I'll talk a lot about stress hormones. I'll talk a lot about neurotransmitters. I'll talk a lot about, you know, inflammatory markers like cytokines, because those are the kinds of biochemical changes that we can induce with a dietary change or with a supplement intervention or with some, some sort of a functional foods approach, you know, so we can use those natural options to change biochemistry. But the reason we care about that here at Amare is because those changes in biochemistry can also lead to changes in psychology. So we can look at how the biochemistry changes your mood or your mental focus or your stress levels or your, your ability to be resilient and all of those sorts of things. So that's the sort of lens that I bring to the, to the picture. You know, if there's a stress problem, I want to try to you know, figure out the underlying biochemistry of it. Michael, on the other hand, comes from a little bit different background, more from a behavioral medicine perspective. So I'll let him introduce himself a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, as Sean mentioned, my background is in behavioral science and, and mental health from a clinical perspective. So I've been a mental health specialist in, for the County of Orange for about seven years now, uh, where I specialize in something called crisis stabilization. Um, you know, with, within my career, I've been able to work with different federal agencies and graduate programs across Southern California. And, you know, one of my big passion points is understanding human behavior. Um, and that's really the forefront of, of my interest and my passion. So here at Amari, I'm really able to do what I love where I get to examine the way nutrition influences behavior from a mental wellness perspective. Um, so as you guys probably already know, tonight we're going to be walking you through how the microbiome influences, you know, stress and, you know, there's, there's no better person to, to walk us through that other than, you know, Dr. Sean and, and ourselves over here. All right. So uh, this is the last time we're going to be talking about um, stress during Stress Awareness Month, right? This, you know, it's the last last um, day of the month. Um, but you know, it was really funny. You know, people have sort of been bringing up this idea. You know, we we're, we we we've been saying all month. You know, hey, here's our topic tonight in Stress Awareness Month, and people are kind of like, yeah. Isn't every month stress month, especially now, you know, because we're, you know, we're all sort of at a heightened level of stress because of, you know, the, the coronavirus and the pandemic and, you know, the quarantines and all the uncertainty in our lives right now, you know, but, you know, what we're trying to do is not, not tell people what they already know, that stress levels are really high, but to try to tell them something that they don't know, which is there are a lot of really effective natural options to get a handle on stress or get a handle on what we call here at Amare mental wellness. And when we talk about mental wellness, stress is absolutely a big piece of that whole puzzle, but it's not just about saying, hey, we're gonna lower your stress. We actually wanna improve people's stress resilience. We wanna improve their focus, which is something that goes out the window when you're stressed. We want to improve your, 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 your mental performance. We want to improve your overall well-being. We want to improve all of that. 
all of those kinds of things live under this umbrella that we refer to as the mental wellness continuum, where every single person is on this continuum. And we, we assign a number to you know, wherever you are, one to 10. And if you're at the low end, sort of depression, anxiety, burnout status, you're at the low end of the mental wellness continuum. The kinds of things that we'll talk about tonight can get you out of that low end and bring you more up into the middle end. But the people in the middle end, because people in the middle part of that mental wellness continuum, they might have daytime fatigue, they might have some brain fog, they may and they want, they might not have good, might have a little bit of, you know, you know, nighttime and like like principles that we'll talk about tonight and the principles we talk about every night will take you from that middle zone and move you up closer to that optimized zone. And you might think, if this is the first time you're hearing us talk about this, that once you get into that optimized zone of being a nine, for example, you're done, right? You just, you just get to that point of success. But I think you'd be surprised that the people who find themselves in the, in the, in the area of a nine on the scale of one to 10, they're the ones who start thinking about, hey, how can I get that edge? How can I get that mental edge so I can get a physical edge? How can I get that mental edge so I can go, go, to, that, go to that peak of achievement that has always been elusive to me? You know, the first part of my career, that's the kind of people that I worked with, elite level athletes at the Olympic level, at the professional sports level, who might've been a nine, but who wanted to be a 9.1 or a 9.2. So the principles that we'll talk about tonight can meet you wherever you are on this mental wellness continuum and help you move a little bit to the right, a little bit to the right, a little bit to the right. And a, and a, and a really nice way to sum that up, to really say it to somebody in a, in, a, in a very simple way is how you feel is not just in your head, your stress and your anxiety and your mood and your brain fog and your energy levels and that kind of stuff. It's also in your gut, what we call the second brain. And it's also in your heart, which is what we call the third brain. These three brains communicate with each other in some really, really important ways that determine where we are on this mental wellness continuum. And so if we can modulate those signals, if we can, if we can optimize those signals, we can actually get somebody to move as far up this mental wellness continuum as they want to. And that's all really cool. But the best part about it is that we know enough about it scientifically that we can do something about it naturally to move you up that mental wellness continuum. Sometimes we're doing something in the brain in your head. Sometimes we're doing something in the brain in your gut around the microbiome and your gut integrity. Sometimes we're doing something to improve the efficiency of the, of the third brain in your chest, your heart. But no matter what target we're focusing on, we're really doing it from the perspective of how we can move you up this mental wellness continuum. And the, you know, the microbiome is a big, exciting, you know, fundamental changing kind of a target for us. You know, the microbiome is, microbiome is something that you know some scientists have been studying for you know 40 or 50 years in some really cool cool ways but it's only the last 10 years and especially the last five years where we've really gotten a handle on what's there in terms of the hundred trillion bacteria that live in the gut which ones are the good ones which ones are the bad ones why the good ones are the good ones what are the what are the chemical signaling molecules that they're making all of this science is fundamentally changing, not just how we think about mental wellness through what we call the gut-brain axis, but really thinking about how we think about all of human health. And that's gotten the gut microbiome to become a national conversation. I've, it, as a scientist, I've never seen something go from being pure science to being a mainstream public health story as quickly as I've seen this. And because of that, it really is changing how we approach this whole area. You know, so we talked about stress just a, you know, a little bit just a few minutes ago. We've always known that stress is a big problem. You know, I, I've been studying this area for, for at least 20 years now, and it's always sort of been on the radar, meaning, you know, stress and depression and anxiety and all these things that we that fall under that mental wellness continuum. The World Health Organization has been has been categorizing that kind of stuff as the as the health epidemic of the 21st century for years. And it, you know, some, some years it would be number five, some years it would be number three. We would always tell people by 20. 2030, 
20, 30, 10 years from now, it's going to become number one. And it actually became number one in 2018. Just when Amara was launching its first round of products to the world, th this, this epidemic became the number one problem around the globe. You know, so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, big problem. The thing that makes it really interesting to study is that I think it's, you know, I think it's coming to a point now where people are sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. And they've tried the antidepressants and they've tried anti-anxieties and maybe they've tried sleep drugs and maybe they've tried ADHD, you know, remedies and none of them have really gotten them to where they wanted to get, you know, or maybe they've masked some of their symptoms, but they've given them a whole bunch of side effects. So the idea around stress being a problem, but that it can be managed or modulated naturally, that's becoming a whole national conversation. And what we're trying to do here at Amari is really say, hey, national conversation around mental wellness, national conversation around the microbiome, that's the same conversation if you can marry the two up in the right way. And, you know, don't take our word for it, you know, that, that, you know, what happens in your gut is related to what happens in your brain. There's lots of books written about it. There are tens of thousands of scientific articles now, just over the last couple of years on this topic. Every major research university in the world has a microbiome research center, a dedicated research center that is studying this kind of stuff. Every single multinational National pharmaceutical company has a microbiome group that is looking at what's the microbiome doing and what's it producing and how are those signaling molecules changing different aspects of not just mental wellness, but also physical health. There are entire biotech companies that are built around the idea of harnessing the microbiome to prevent, not just treat, but prevent Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or different kinds of cancer. It is a super, super exciting area, you know, but to step back a little bit, you know, you know, that, that, that all sounds very grandiose to just sort of dial it back to something that's a little more close in. What we're doing here at Amari is realizing that the bacteria in the gut will, will produce signaling molecules that can travel to the brain and have a huge impact on our mood, our stress levels, our mental acuity, uh, our, our energy levels, our overall well-being, our resilience, the list goes on and on and on. But we also realize that the signals that come from the brain, stress and tension and anxiety and burnout and things like that, that go down to the gut can actually change what happens in the gut. So it very much is this, 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 this bi-directional communication. And we'll talk a little bit more about how that happens and how we harness it and how we modulate it here at Amari. But suffice to say that this is a very, very important um, pathway whereby we can modulate human performance if we can get all of these different systems talking to each other. So let me give you an example. When we, when we look at what, what, what these bacteria are producing in the gut, we know that 90 to 95% of our body's serotonin is made in our gut. That's the neurotransmitter sort of of being happy or sad. Um, we know that 70% of our dopamine, the neurotransmitter that helps with motivation, is made in the gut. We know that most of our norepinephrine that helps us focus, most of the GABA that helps us relax. We know that our short chain fatty acids that help with metabolism, all of these things are made in the gut. And that's what makes it so exciting to focus on the gut first as a thing to modulate so that if you get the gut right, then you can get the signals right. Then you can get your energy levels right. Then you can get your physical activity right. Then you can get, you get the idea, right? We sort of think of this from a biochemical perspective. And if we want a particular benefit, we have to go all the way back, step by step by step to see what is the actual root cause. And a lot of that root cause is stemming from what's happening in the gut and stemming from what's happening in the microbiome. So, you know, I just, just kind of mentioned a little bit about this, that the gut talks to the brain and the brain talks to the gut. And that can be important, not just because it's interesting from a scientific perspective and from an academic perspective, but, you know, it, it really can, can give you some, some real life either problems or benefits, depending on what the nature of those signals are. You have the wrong signals, you might be gaining weight. 
You have the right signals, you might be losing weight. You have the wrong signals, you might be having digestive problems. You have the right signals, you might be perfectly regular, and that is not a, not a concern for you. You know, it just goes back and forth. So, you know, we're, we're really focusing on some of these things over here. The neurotransmitter signalings, your sensation of stress and anxiety, your overall mood, and really your overall behavior. You know, there are really cool studies we're not going to get into the weeds of tonight but if you can give people the right fibers you can change their overall level of irritability you can change whether you know that child acts out or is calm you can change how how re stress resilient somebody is in the face of stress will they step away from that stress and not be able to deal with it or will they step into the stress because they have good stress resilience and good something think about what a healthy human is these days is that you have you have about 10 trillion cells in your human body. We want to keep those healthy. You have about 100 trillion bacteria cells in your microbiome. We want to keep those happy. So the 100 trillion bacteria and the 10 trillion human cells, that really is a super organism that needs to work together. And if we can get that signaling, you know, the, 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 the messaging between those two sort of bacteria and human organisms, that's where ultimate performance really really lives. And that's the kind of stuff we've been doing for the last three years. A lot of it is around this kind of stuff, you know, so it's not just, it's not just about getting people to be happy, right? That isn't what we're doing here. We really want to modulate all of these different neurotransmitters naturally. So we're not giving you serotonin. We're not, we're not artificially amping up your level of dopamine. We're not doing any of that kind of stuff. We're working with your body's internal machinery, whether that be your, your microbiome or your immune system or your neurons in your brain or your inflammatory cascade. All of these have an impact on partly the production of these neurotransmitters, partly the, the, the transmission of these neurotransmitters, their transport, partly the signaling ability of these neurotransmitters at their receptor sites, partly the ability of that neurotransmitter to get to where it has its signaling without being blocked by something that could get in the way, like a stress hormone or you know, overinflammation or something like that. So it's a lot of moving parts and it's really trying to get a balance of what naturally should be there um, in the in 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 the first place, but what what has become unbalanced by stress, and this is one of the things that we'll talk about a little bit tonight. You can be stressed, and it will cause a problem in all this machinery that I'm talking about, or your machinery can be a little bit out of balance, and that will cause various kinds of stress: biochemical stress, physiological stress. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You know, so the 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 idea here is that if we can modulate all of this machinery, get everything in balance, that can help you be less stressed. That can help you show up in the world in a way that, re that really improves your stress resilience. That can help all the all the metabolic machinery work better. So you know, instead of being in a stress beget stress beget stress, like you getting worse and worse and worse, vicious cycle downward. What we're trying to do is get all of this in balance so that people can get better and better and better and better and get into this upward cycle where their energy is getting better and that's leading to better motivation and that's leading to better dietary choices. And that's what I call a virtuous cycle because instead of getting slowly worse and worse sliding down, people are getting better and better and better and climbing up. And that's a really, really cool thing to see. We see it in the clinic all the time. So the question is, if we're going to modulate all those signals, where do we start? You know, you might say that you would start with, you know, your, your inflammatory signals. You might say that you would start, you know, directly in the brain. You might say that you would start, okay, you talked about the gut, let's do the gut. What we're trying to do is come at this in it is, is, is a holistic, comprehensive perspective as possible. And that's one of the reasons that nutritionals work as well as they do. Because even if we're talking about one herb, 
that one herb, if it's properly formulated, if it's properly extracted and it's pro well, if it's properly grown, if it's properly harvested, if it's properly extracted and it's properly delivered to you, you know, that's a lot of properlies. But if you can get the right thing, that one herb isn't just one chemical entity like a synthetic pharmaceutical. It is hundreds and sometimes thousands of bioactive molecules. So just one herb is going to have a multifaceted approach. Then if we combine that with a fiber that works on different bacteria and we give you different bacteria to have different signaling qualities, you get the idea that every time we choose a natural product, we're, we're, we're really modulating these pathways in a multifactorial way. So, and the reason that we do that and the reason that we explain all this to people is that we want people to have enough confidence in the science behind the products where it's seamless to them, that they can just pick up a product like Fundamentals or Mood Plus or Energy Plus, and they can see, oh, there's some natural things in there. Oh, and there looks like there's some science there. But when they plug it into their life, they can feel it. They can feel their energy. They can feel their stress resilience. They can feel their better mood. They can feel their improved sleep quality. Because you look at a graph like this, right, between the gut and the brain, and you can start anywhere. Let's, let's, let, let's start here. Stress, anxiety, depression. These are things that can come at us from the world around us, right? The things out there that we can't control necessarily, it's going to have an impact on our brain. That's going to have an impact on our stress response that you see here, here, this HPA axis. That's going to have an effect on our immune system. The immune system is one of the primary signaling pathways between your brains. So if your immune system function is altered, your signaling between your brains is going to be altered. Part of that signaling is going to be altered gut function. We already talked about the, you know, the signals that come out of the gut. If your microbiome isn't in balance, that's going to set off a stress response in the rest of the body. So you pick where you want to have the, your, your, your first effect. Um, it would be perfectly logical to say, well, let's start over here at the stress response. We'll, we'll, we'll reduce stress. And if we reduce stress, that's going to help with the immune system and, and good. Let's start over here and, and tell people to reduce their stress. Okay. Let's go over here and start at the microbiome. Okay. Let's start here with gut function and we'll improve your gut integrity. Okay. Let's go directly to the immune system and, and prime your immune system so it's properly active. Okay, any of those would be, would be legitimate targets. What if you could target them all simultaneously? That's exactly what we're doing here at Amare. You know, we have products that target at each one of those boxes. We have, tar we have products that target several boxes at the same time. And we've got a product line that targets e each and every one of these boxes plus other boxes that are sort of intermediary boxes in between, in, you know, in between these major metabolic areas. So when we use nutrition to target all of those different areas, we can do it in a way that is a, that is a really, the way I like to describe it is that you know, nutrition is a really intimate intervention because what we eat not only has a direct physical contact, right? So we talk a lot about metabolism and physiology, right? The sort of mechanisms that are going on. But think about what happens when you apply a piece of nutrition to your body. It physically touches your mouth. It physically touches your entire gastrointestinal tract. It physically touches your microbiome. Once it's absorbed, it actually assimilates into your body and becomes part of us, right? So, I mean, without, without sort of overstating it, there's no more intimate interaction that we have with the world around us than that, you know? So it, it really gives, um, it gives an impact that is like nothing else. Um, and if we can apply the right impact, if we can have people do simple things like this that you've probably heard of before, eat a rainbow, right? The reason we tell people to eat a rainbow is because it's a really simple way for them to get your carotenoids and your flavonoids and your polyphenols and your thiols and your, and your isothiocinolates and you know, all of these you know, gobbledygook words that have these signaling qualities at the level of the microbiome, at the level of the immune system, at the level of the cardiovascular system, at the level of the neurons in the brain. And so, you know, the colors are indicative of different kinds of phytonutrients that have different signaling aspects across that entire gut-brain axis and the heart-brain axis. And if you can just try to get 
you know, at least one color a day, I, I'm sorry, at least one of each color a day, then, then you're going to be, you're going to be in better shape than if you got, than if you got fewer colors, or if you're in the shape of most people who get no colors, uh, which is, which is not where we want you to be. That's a, that's a, that's a sort of a shorthand way that we can get people to eat the right way to have an effect on modulating stress throughout all those stages of the gut brain axis. So here's, here's some of those things, right? You eat something that's red, like a, like a tomato, for example, that that's going to be high in lycopene. The reason it's red is because of the lycopene, right? So that's a signal to us that this is something, that this is something healthy. The reds and purples, like, you know, blueberries and blackberries and raspberries and grapes and things like that are really high in these polyphenols called anthocyanins or one of my favorite categories called OPCs, oligomeric proanthocyanidins. Those are some of the most potent microbiome protectors. So if you can protect the good bacteria, you're gonna have good signaling effects. They also have direct effects in the brain to help you with focus. And they, they, they sort of calm something that we call monkey mind, right? Which is this sort of you know spinning, jumping around, can't focus kind of a scenario that a lot of us struggle with, especially now in our sort of, you know, you know, giving you the right polyphenol extracts from pine bark and grape seeds and things like that. So you get the idea. I'm not going to go down through all of these, but you know, the idea around the colors is that those colors are indicative of these different phytonutrients and these different phytonutrients are found in different foods that are that color, but they have signaling qualities across, you know, all these different aspects of the gut brain axis. So we can talk about nutrition at, at, at even a little more of a, of a macro level, right? So we can talk about individual nutrients. We can talk about individual foods, you know, a green food, a red food, a yellow food. We can also talk about individual dietary patterns. And that sometimes is even more instructive. So I'm actually work, working on a book right now. Uh, it's about 80% done. The new title is going to be The Mental Fitness Diet. And it's about this idea of what are the dietary patterns that are most associated with good mental fitness, right? Being able to be sharp, being able to be resilient, being able to be at the top of your game mentally, which is important if you want to be at the top of your game physically too. And so here are three dietary patterns that we actually know quite a lot about. Here is the standard American diet. It's characterized by lots of fast food. It's characterized by a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of the wrong kinds of fat, a lot of sugar, uh, because it's processed, it's typically very, very low in fiber. You know, all of those kinds of things lead to the growth of a category of bacteria that is associated broadly with inflammation. So, you know, you eat a lot of this kind of stuff, you're going to be overinflamed. That's going to lead to a lot of health problems in the body. There's a, there's a, uh, there's a, a less bad, but equally bad, I guess, in certain ways, right? If it's not a, the, the processed food diet that a lot of people are eating, there are a lot of fad diets around low carb, right? And so if you're low carb, that means that you are by default, you're either high protein or high fat. And when you persist on that sort of a diet for a long time, you grow a population of bacteria that is, that's associated with driving your microbiome towards one that is associated with more cardiovascular disease. So you'll have a, a particular kind of cardiovascular stress because of the compounds that you are, that is, that, that is, uh, being manufactured by those bacteria, TMAO, too much, well, too much choline and carnitine leading to the production of too much TMAO, which leads to um, damage to your artery linings, which leads to plaques, which leads to heart attacks and strokes, right? So, you know, the paleos, the the you know the the ketos and all those kinds of things they can be done healthy so don't get me wrong but if they're done like most people do them where they say oh that's the diet where i eat all the bacon i i want or that's the diet where i eat only steaks or you know that's the diet where i eat a big mac hold the bun because the bun is the carbohydrate right that's not what we're talking about here you can eat a fairly high high quality high protein diet that also includes a lot of these foods that also includes a lot of high fiber, high color, 
high phytonutrient kinds of foods. And this kind of a diet, what I would call a mental fitness diet or a Mediterranean diet or an Okinawan diet or a Scandinavian diet or an anti-inflammatory diet or a blue zone diet. There is a lot of research around this dietary pattern around the globe that will grow a category of bacteria that is associated with, with producing signaling molecules like neurotransmitters, like short chain fatty acids that are anti-inflammatory, that are mood elevating, and that are physical fitness oriented. You can actually change the ratio of bacteria so that you'll both lose weight and be protected from weight gain. So there's a lot of good that can go here. And it's really, really simple to do. All you have to do is eat that rainbow as much as possible. All you have to do is avoid too much of the wrong kinds of, 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 of fat and meat, too much of the, of, the, of the fast food, highly processed stuff, and make sure you're getting, make sure you're getting enough fiber and, 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 uh, and phytonutrients. It's as simple as that. Um, and, and, and yet, you know, people don't always eat this. And there's one really important reason why, because when we're stressed, we're driven to eat more junk food. We're driven to eat more comfort food. We're driven away from eating broccoli and whole grains and green leafy vegetables, right? Th that stress response in the body will specifically tell the brain through its, through its stress hormone signaling to eat sugar, to eat comfort foods, to eat quickly digesting, easily stored kinds of things, right? So, you know, th there's sort of two pieces to that story. If we can help on the stress piece, you're getting less of those stress eating signals. And if we, can, if we can eat more of these foods, we're getting more of the right kinds of signals, right? So there's a lot of ways that we can modulate this. And I've actually come around to the point in the last couple of years that the supplement piece for a lot of people can be that first piece of the puzzle to help them control stress. Whether it's working in the microbiome or it's working in the brain or it's working someplace else in the body, there's a lot of places that we can plug in to sort of short circuit that stress response. We're gonna talk a little bit you know, about, the, about the microbiome piece specifically tonight. But if you can do that for somebody where they just go, they pick up the product, they ingest it for a couple of days and they go, ah, my stress is lower. If their stress is lower, their eating is probably better as a result of that. Their exercise patterns are probably better as a result of that. Their sleep hygiene, their sleep quality is better because of that. You know, so you know, the, the, the supplements as a first step for a lot of people are kind of like hitting the easy button, right? It's something that's easy for them to do. It's a good first step in the right direction. But importantly, it fosters or, or motivates those other healthy behaviors that we wanted to, them to do in the first place, but because they were so stressed out, they were always fighting. They were trying to willpower their way through it. And you know, uh, uh, as many of you have, had, have heard me say on, this, you know, on these calls before, willpower is, uh, is kind of a crock, right? We can't willpower our way through that kind of stuff. And maybe, maybe we'll actually do a do a whole talk on that some night. But when you, look at our, when you look at our product line, 22 products across this product line, we're the only ones in the entire natural products industry that is 100% focused on what we're doing, mental wellness, and how we're doing it by modulating all these communication systems simultaneously, whether it's gut brain axis, whether it's heart brain axis, whether it's any of those being targeted individually. And one of the ways that we do that in a very comprehensive way, just to give you a quick flavor for what's possible when it's done the right way, is our fundamentals pack. When we launched this at the very beginning of 2018, we were launching it sort of into the perfect storm, right? This was right on the heels of the World Health Organization saying, hey, congratulations, burnout is now one of the, you know, one of the driving syndromes around the globe now. Um, uh, uh, mental wellness issues had become first um, um, uh, graded by this thing that's called global disease burden, right? So, you know, we were launching it into a, into a massive, massive need that was being inadequately addressed by the synthetic options that are out there. You know, so the world was particularly ready for this. We won this award called the Nutra Award in 2018 when we launched for the best new finished product across the entire natural products industry. And part of that was because of the science. Part of that was because we were, you know, establishing a new category 
category around mental wellness through the gut-brain axis. Part of it, though, was, was because we put out and continue to put out a massive educational program, like this kind of stuff that Michael and I do on a, reg on a regular basis and that our marketing team supports with videos and, and downloadable content and shareable content to try to get this message to as many people as possible that, you know, there are things we can do in the gut. That's what mentabiotics does. There's things that we can do in the brain. That's what mental focus does. There's things that we can do in the axis that connect those two brains. That's what mental sync does. Any one of those is going to help somebody feel better along that mental wellness continuum. They'll work in different ways. So you'll feel s somewhat differently better determining, you know, um, the, uh, depending on what kind of product you choose. But if you put them together in a whole pack like this, you have the world's first coordinated gut brain access system. And that's, that's really why we won, why we won the award. And so what's in that is, is this, this concept of multifactorial addressment of all of those different pathways get you to the end goal, which is feeling better in a much more comprehensive way. So the way that we sort of build that nuts and bolts is we start in the microbiome. We say, what are the bacteria? What are the probiotics that have been clinically shown in humans to have a positive benefit on mental wellness? And lo and behold, there's this one that helps to reduce stress. There's this one that helps to enhance calmness. There's this one to help that, 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 that helps improve mood. I'm not going to go through a whole microbiome piece tonight. We'll talk more about probiotics towards the, towards the end of the seminar tonight. But suffice to say, not every probiotic is going to give you this effect, which is what we call a psychobiotic. Specific strains of bacteria and only specific strains of bacteria can help you with these mental wellness benefits. Other strains can help with other things, but if your objective is to feel better, to feel as good as you possibly can, these are the strains that you're going to want to look at. We don't just stop there though. You know, we know from the clinical data that if you gave people just those strains or just one of those strains, they would feel better in that particular way. But we also give a range of different prebiotic fibers for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that we know that each of these prebiotic fibers can help improve stress resilience, right? And that's, and that's great. We can give a fiber and people can actually feel better in a stressful situation. As a result of that, they'll have less inflammation, they'll have less um, immune system dysfunction, they'll have, they'll, have, they'll have better gut integrity, they'll have a lot of good health benefits, but they'll also feel better as a result of that. And what we've realized is that one of the reasons that they feel so much better is because those prebiotic fibers are a fuel source for the bacteria that we're growing. And if they have a better fuel source, they grow better and their metabolism is better. So they make more of the right kinds of signaling molecules. They'll make more of the neurotransmitters that we want. They'll make more of the short chain fatty acids that we want. And then those signals have to go out across the entire gut brain axis. And that's where our phytonutrients come in. These are very specialized plant extracts here from apples and grapes and pine bark that can help to amplify that signaling across the entire gut brain axis. Sometimes they're working in the gut. Sometimes they're working in the brain. Sometimes they're working in that axis in between. But when you put all of that together in a properly coordinated recipe, if you will, this is what you get. This is the result of just one of the many, many scientific presentations that we've done over the last couple of years, showing that if you can rebalance the microbiome, get, get better levels of good bacteria, get better levels of diversity and resilience. If you get a better, healthier microbiome, people clearly feel better. You can see all the negative mood states going down significantly, and then a positive mood state like vigor going up significantly. This shows us that people don't just feel happier, and they don't just feel more energetic, but they feel better in every way imaginable that we can actually quantify. They, their tension is lower because we're able to, their microbiome is able to make more GABA. So their tension comes down. Their depression index is lower because their microbiome is able to make more serotonin. So they're happier. Their fatigue is lower because their microbiome is able to make more dopamine. So they're more motivated. So you guys get the idea here. We can help people feel so much better in so many different ways 
because what we're doing is restoring the ability of the microbiome to be the body's internal pharmacy and to produce the signaling molecules that we need when we need them, especially when we're under stress, especially when we need more energy, especially when we have to focus, especially in all those sort of crux situations where it really matters, that's when your microbiome would naturally jump in and do what it's supposed to do to improve our mental fitness and our, and our physical performance. So with all that as sort of a lead up, what Michael and I have been doing, well, Michael, why don't you explain what we do on the second half of the show? Yeah, sure. You know, so, so what we've been doing, um, you know, since the beginning of time, we've been collecting and receiving questions from, you know, everybody out there about the products. Um, and, and what we've been doing the, the last couple of weeks here is we've been bringing to you guys the five or 10 most common questions that are on the topic of the night. So being the topic of the microbiome and stress, you know, we, we brought to you guys a, a set of questions that we get a lot, which probably means you get them a lot as well. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, and run through some of these questions. And, and Sean, the expert, is, is going to give us the insight as to, you know, what, what these answers are. You all ready, Sean? Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. So how do probiotics actually influence the microbiome? This is a great question because I think what a lot of people assume is that, you know, you have a probiotic, which is defined as a, as a, as a bacteria that induces a healthy effect on the host, right? So it has to have a health benefit. I think people sometimes think that if they take a probiotic and ingest it, it's just automatically going to grow in the microbiome. Uh, and sometimes they do that, depending on the strain. Sometimes what they are is what, what are called transitory uh, probiotics. They'll go into the microbiome, and they don't stay and grow. They don't set up shop. They don't, they don't become residents, but they will change the metabolism of the other things that are there. So when we think about, uh, uh, about probiotics and an influence in the microbiome, we don't think about just probiotics. Um, you can actually take the wrong kinds of probiotics that will upset the balance of the microbiome if you're taking the wrong, the wrong ones at too high of a level, for example. But So what we do when we talk about probiotics, we talk about them in a very holistic, almost like a rainforest or a garden approach where we want to give you probiotics, but we also want to give them along with prebiotics. That's the fibers that they use as their food. And we also want to give them along with phytobiotics. These are plant extracts phytonutrients that can help with the metabolism that the microbiome is supposed to do in the first place. So when we look at something like, like mentobiotics, for example, that's not just a probiotic product. That is a fully functional, multifactorial gut support product that has probiotics, but it also has all of those other support ingredients as well. So we give you the probiotics and we give you specific strains that help with stress and anxiety and mood but we also match those. So we know what bacteria strains will use what prebiotic fibers, and we make sure that those are matched up so we can have proper and optimal metabolism. And then we match that up with the phytobiotics so that we get the end, be, end result that we want, which in, the, which in the case of mentobiotics is improving mood. We really wanna support the signaling across the entire gut-brain axis so that we can help people with irritability and tension and mood and overall feeling better. And the way that we get there is by improving the overall diversity and resilience of the microbiome so that people just feel better. Even if they don't have quote unquote gut problems, we can use the gut as a way to improve how people feel. That's awesome. And you know, one, one of the cool things that, you know, I just wanted to add is that, you know, all those strain specific probiotics that are in mentobiotics are clinically studied. And that's really the, the factual living proof of these living organisms, the probiotics actually manifesting and feeling better, translating into an improved kind of human behavior. And that's really important when, when we're looking at it from, you know, an efficacy perspective. So, you know, I just wanted to, to, to kind of share that with y'all. Right, right. It's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good point that you bring up, you know, because probiotics are, you know, one of the hottest things in nutrition right now. And people just, you know, kind of, kind of blindly go to the store because, because they don't know any better that, you know, they go to the store and they go, well, you know, 
one probiotic is the same as the other probiotic. So I'll, you know, I'll get the one that's on sale or I'll get the one that has the, you know, the longest label. And, and it really isn't that at all. You have to look at the strains. You have to look at the overall collection in order to determine what benefits you're going to get. And our benefits here are around mental wellness. That's right. All right. So number two, do probiotics actually help with neurotransmitter balance and modulation? Hugely. So there's a whole category of probiotics now that we refer to as psychobiotics. Uh, we have referred to them here at Amari as mentabiotics. They are probiotic strains that can actually produce neurotransmitters in the gut. And that production of more neurotransmitters in the gut will have signaling qualities up to the brain so that we can feel better. So we can improve mood, we can improve relaxation, we can improve focus, we can improve resilience, we can improve energy levels. All things that we're perceiving in the brain in our head because of what we're doing in the gut. And it, you know, it's important for people to understand that you know, the, the, the signals that we're generating from the microbiome in, in the gut don't just kind of, you know, it, you, can, you can see these areas here, um, these arrows. It's not like, the, like the, the neurotransmitters just kind of leak out of the gut into the bloodstream and then flow through the bloodstream up to the brain and then leak into the brain. And now you have more serotonin in your brain. It doesn't really work that way. Having more, let's say serotonin, just use one as an example, having more serotonin in the gut will send a signal to the brain for you to be happier or less sad. Um, but some of those signals might go through the nervous system. Here you can see an example of the vagus nerve. Some of those signals might go through your immune immune system, one of the key signaling organs in the body. Some of those signals might go through this network of, of compounds called cytokines, which are involved in your inflammatory cascade. There's a, there's a signaling network called the endocannabinoid system, whereby we know that if we modulate the microbiome, we can have signaling effects through the endocannabinoid system to help with stress and anxiety. So there's a lot of ways that doing one thing in the microbiome can have a vast array of positive signals signals going out through the entire body to the brain and the head, but also to your stress response organs, also to your metabolic organs like your thyroid and your pancreas, also through your immune system to make your immune system more robust and more resilient. And so it, I mean, it really is important to understand that if we can modulate all those signals simultaneously, we can get a very comprehensive improvement in overall mental wellness in people. And I think that's what people are looking for. You know, when we did this clinical trial that you can see, we didn't want to that will lower stress. We know there's one other bacteria that will lower anxiety. We know there's another bacteria that will lower, lower depression. And that's all really good information because now we can put together an entire system that really gives people that holistic feeling of, of overall wellness that we will measure as global well-being uh, or overall quality of life or psychological vigor. These really, these really uh, like surrounding ways of improving how people feel better. So, you know, people can go and get our, get our studies and, you know, see how we do it and see how, how they might want to plug it into their own lives. Fantastic. And, and, you know, we've been talking about, you know, probiotics and the microbiome and how it influences stress. Um, but we get this question a lot around, you know, do you have, you know, targeted probiotics for different purposes? Um, and, and maybe Sean, you can fill us in on, you know, what different types of probiotics we have to offer in that, in that essence. Right. That's a, that's a good question. And I think it's a, I think it's a piece that, 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 that kind of gets lost sometimes in how we communicate because, because Amari is the mental wellness company, right? We are always talking about how we can do something in the gut to help people feel better, right? And energy and mood and you know, all the things that we're talking about here. But in order to get that mental wellness benefit, we have to have an effect on gut health, on gastrointestinal um, uh, uh, performance, on, uh, on motility, on gut integrity, reducing leaky gut, all that kind of stuff where we just kind of you know, like almost pass it by because it, it, in order to get the mental wellness benefits, you have to be, we, you have to be able to, to deliver the gut health benefits. So a product like probiotics, this one has different kinds of strains 
um, compared to our psychobiotic strains that we have in mentobiotics, right? In mentobiotics, we've got strains that help with stress and anxiety and depression. In this product, we have five different strains that really help with gut performance and overall general wellness. So when you take this product, you're going to get benefits in the gut in terms of better gut integrity, better gut function, better absorption of nutrients, better overall inflammatory balance, better overall immune system balance, because all of those things, all of those benefits emanate from having a healthy gut in the first place. If you have an unhealthy gut, you won't be able to absorb your nutrients the right way. You'll be over-inflamed. You'll be immunocompromised. You might be, your immune system might be overactive and giving you food intolerances and allergies. It might be underactive and you're susceptible to every, you know, upper respiratory tract infection that comes down the pike, you know, because all of those physical health benefits are, 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 are emanating from what, what is happening in the gut in the first place. And so when we put this product together, we really wanted to give a wide range of different strains that are associated with different aspects of specifically of gut health. So you could have that very strong foundational building block on what, on, on which to build all the other things. The Really tells you what it does, whether it's whether it's all of that is really, really important. If your ultimate goal is going to be physical health and mental health, we really want to start at the gut. And if you can get, you know, it's, um, I was just about to say, if you can get a number of different strains, that's going to be overall better, but it's not, you know, it's not what a lot of companies try to do these days where they try to get into an arms race of saying, you know, well, Amari's got five. So if I can put it in six, that means I'm going to be better. Or if I can put in 10, that means I'm going to be better. It doesn't necessarily work that way. You really have to look at the benefits that are being delivered by that specific strain. And if companies are using the research validated strains versus any of these generic species that are out there, they will go to great lengths like we're doing right now to tell you you what the benefits are that you can expect. And here you can see you're getting a very wide range of general health benefits. Awesome. So th this, this question kind of relates to, you know, uh, you know, what people might be going through in their life or whatever it may be. But a lot of people message us and ask us, well, you know, if I'm taking an antibiotic for whatever reason, you know, will it impact my microbiome negatively? And the second part of that question is, you know, should I take a probiotic at the same time or can I? Okay, all right, so your, your audio just came back. Let's, why don't we do that question again? Because I lost your audio, so I wanna make sure we get on the recording. Okay, absolutely. So if I am taking an antibiotic, you know, will it impact my microbiome negatively? And the second part is, is can I take probiotics with it? Yeah, so this is, this is a really easy question to answer as a, as a top line. Um, if, you're taking a micro, if you're taking an antibiotic, it absolutely is destroying your microbiome. Um, and so if, if you know that that's happening, yes, you can take a probiotic to prevent some of that damage. Um, it's not going to prevent all the damage, you know? So what I, what I like to tell people is that absolutely, if you're on antibiotic therapy, take a probiotic along with it, as long as they're separated by a couple of hours of intake. So if you take your, your antibiotic at eight o'clock in the morning, don't take your probiotic until you know, 11 o'clock in the morning or noon, right? Make sure they're separated by, you know, two, three, four hours, if you can possibly do that. That's going to lessen the damage that the antibiotic is doing to your, to your, to your entire microbiome. Um, I put up this graph, which is a very, very busy graph on purpose.
are one of the worst. So, you know, if you're taking antibiotics, you need to be taking a probiotic. Probiotics will, will do a good job of helping to rebuild. So first of all, they'll do a good job of helping to lessen the damage of an antibiotic. But then after the antibiotic is done, you need to keep taking that probiotic to rebuild that strong microbiome structure. And so the structure is a piece of it. Then you can do other things on top of that probiotic supplement to improve the microbiome metabolism. And that means adding prebiotics, eating your fermented foods like your, like your yogurts and things like that, adding beans and whole grains, which are a good source of the fiber that the, that the food fiber that the, that the probiotics are going to grow on. So there's lots of things that can do damage, but luckily there's lots of natural options that we can use to prevent that damage and to actually have a rebuilding effect to make the overall healthier microbiome stronger because that's going to make our overall mental wellness stronger. That's going to make our overall physical health stronger. Are you there? Oh, there it goes. It okay. looks like we, we got a little bit of a snippet there, but that was a remarkable slide, John. Yeah, um, there's, there's so much going on there. And I, you know, it's, you've said this before on plenty of calls, like we like people to know that we've considered all these different aspects yeah. so that when we build a product, people can just take the product and know that they're getting all of that stuff that we talked about. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a beautiful slide. Um, so next piece, you know, what, what should I avoid you know, if, if there are a couple things that, you know, we should really avoid, what should I avoid to keep my microbiome in balance? Yeah, so, so I'm going to use that slide again to explain what we're supposed to avoid because there's so many things that can upset our microbial balance, right? And it's not that, you know, a lot of times we'll have people say, well, I don't have any gut problems. You know, I don't have, you know, I don't have gas or bloating or digestive disturbances or haven't been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's disease or anything weird like that. So, so I'm probably good. But then when you, ask, when you ask them, you know, here are some of the things that can damage your microbiome, you know, There's a lot of antibiotic exposure just out in the environment that a lot of people aren't really, you know, um, um, sort of aware of. We also know that stress signals, just being stressed out, just being sleep deprived can damage your microbiome. So there's a lot of, of stress on your microbiome. So the more that we can take the right probiotic supplements, eat the right prebiotic fibers, eat the right sort of fermented foods, and especially whole, high fiber, high phytonutrient, least processed kinds of foods. Those are the kinds of things that are really going to rebuild our microbiome and get it to a point where it can do what it's supposed to do, which is keep the human body healthy. The microbiome doesn't survive if the human body doesn't survive. There really is this, this, this I mean, it, it, the, the truest of all synergies come between the microbiome and the human body. And if we can get that perfectly balanced, like we're trying to do here at Amare, we can have optimal mental wellness. And if we can get that, we can have optimal physical health and it all comes through the microbiome. But let's say you have a bad microbiome. Let's say that you're, you've been exposed to some of those things that are gonna damage your microbiome. We've actually developed a three-day reset that we call Reboot for the microbiome. It's specifically targeted on rebooting the microbiome from an unbalanced place, which we call dysbiotic, to a neutral place. It, we can't get it all the way back to perfect in three days, but we certainly can get it on a good foundation where it's, where it's ready to be repopulated in the right direction. And the way that we do that is we have people avoid certain kinds of foods for three days. These are you know, high fat animal products, um, high sugar processed foods, and we have them enjoy least processed, lots of fiber, lots of phytonutrients, lots of salads, and you know, almost a vegetarian diet for three days. That really 
takes away the thing that's growing the bad bacteria, the junk food, and it gives you a lot more of the things that grow the good bacteria, the high fiber, high phytonutrient foods. And people do that for three days. We give them, let me go back real quick. We give them um, 12 capsules, two that you take on the first day, four that you take on the second day, six that you take on the third day. These are the reboot capsules that help you get through this adjustment phase. You know, when we give people reboot for three days, this in a sense is a detox, but it's a detox that's focused specifically on the microbiome. It's not a detox where you need to be in the bathroom for three days. It's not a detox where you're going to feel terrible for three days. It really is focused on getting that dysbiotic organ. We use a patented blend of three ingredients that's called sabatin. It's a combination of astragalus root, maristica nut, which is, which is nutmeg, um, and poria, which is a mushroom. The combination of those three natural ingredients gets the liver to be a better detox organ. And why is that important? Because as your bad bacteria starts to die off, it may, if you're really unbalanced, it may start to throw a lot of inflammatory molecules into your systemic circulation. And that can lead to people feeling fatigued and achy and maybe headachy and maybe just a, just a little, almost, almost like, you're, like you've come down with something, right? Just, a, just kind of not great for three days as your body's going through that readjustment. So the herbs here, like the sabatin, help that process along so that people can come out the other side, ready to go, ready to rebuild a new healthy microbiome and ready to go to that next step of the mental wellness continuum. That's, that's fantastic. And you know, one of the most common things that I hear people say following a, you know, reboot is that, you know, they, they, they feel lighter, they feel less stressed, and they've even made some, they, they've even had some less, they've had less amounts of cravings and things like that. And I think that's a really remarkable kind of set of feedback that, that people have gave us. And, and you know, that, that segues us into really going down that route of improving our, our mental wellness, so. Right, exactly. Some people can, you know, if you, do, if you do the reboot along with the kinds of foods that we recommend, that's awesome. People will come back and say, oh, my energy levels are higher and I felt lighter and, you know, all the things that, you, all the things that we hear every day. But we also have a line of functional foods called GBX foods, and they've been designed in a way that you could use those exclusively as your, as your, as your nutrient sources, right? It's the right kind of fiber. It's the right kind of phytonutrients. It's the right kind of all the nutrients that you need, the right kinds of proteins. You could follow just the GBX foods for three days while you're rebooting. And people come off of that and they feel, they feel euphoric for those three days. It's, re, it's really, really cool. But it's not something you're going to want to continue into the, into the future of being you know, that regimented on your plan. But cert, certainly good as a, as a kickstart. Right on. Awesome. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do here is, is you know, we're going to go ahead and uh, review the questions that you guys might have sent us via chat. And then after we respond to those, we're going to open the board so that if anybody has a question, they can raise their hand and, you know, unmute and ask it. So bear with me here. Our first question is, is our hemp oil derived from organic sources, the ingredients in our hemp oil? Yeah, you know, so, you know, on the bottle, I think we label some of them as organic blah, you know, whatever, whatever the, whatever the one is. We have a lot of organic ingredients across our product line, but we don't label all of them organic. And th there's a, there's a lot of reasons for that. Some of it has to do with labeling. Some of it has to do with certification. Some of it has to do with the country of origin, where sometimes organic standards are different than they are here in the United States. So organic isn't a big part of our story necessarily, because organic is only looking at the pesticide aspect of whatever the, whatever the ingredient is that we're talking about. Um, so that's important for hemp because a lot of hemp fields are, are 
covered in pesticides. But what you also have to look at that organic standards don't look at are things like heavy metals, things like organic pollutants like PCBs, things like, 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 like pathogens like salmonellas and E. coli. There's all kinds of things that you need to look at from a purity standpoint. There are which, and we look at all of that through third party laboratories. There's also a whole range of things that you need to look at from an efficacy and a potency standpoint. So purity is basically making sure you don't have things, contaminants. Potency is making sure that you have things that are gonna give you the kind of effect that you're looking for. So we use a range of different third party laboratories and we don't really get hung up on you know, the organic certification or the GMO certification or something like that because we're doing that testing ourselves and we're going far and above what it means to be any of those certification stamps. So hopefully that makes sense, you know, for 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 what we're doing. But to fight, you know, with our hemp product, because you asked about that specifically, um, we do source it from one specific organic farm um, in the United States. We know exactly what farm it comes from. We know the farmer. We we know everything about it. We know where it's extracted. We know where it's produced. All of this happens at different places in the United States. Um, you know, so we have a really really tight. Uh, uh, handle on our entire uh, sourcing supply chain. And that's really, really important to us here at Amari. Awesome. All right. So our next question is, where can I find a recording of these calls if somebody doesn't have Facebook? And where can I ask a question if it's not on our science call? And I can go ahead and answer that question for you. If you have a question, you know, offline and you need to reach Sean or I, you can email us directly at productquestions at amari.com. And if you wanna look at the recording of the video, it's actually uploaded to Dr. Sean's website, seantalbot.com under deep dives. And, and all the, the slides will be there, the recordings will be there. And, and also on, on Facebook, if they do have it, it'll, it'll be there as well, okay? this will be archived up to YouTube sometime tomorrow. You know, so people can go to my YouTube channel or just go to YouTube and type in Dr. Sean Talbot and you'll get to, you know, uh, just a, you know, a, a, a date by date listing of all of these, all of these uh, seminars. And you can, you can, you know, copy the link and share it around to people. Right. All right. So that looks like that covered the questions that were, an that, that were asked via chat. So what I'm going to do now is allow people to unmute themselves and, and feel free to ask away. All right. I see that Wanda put her hand up. There you go. Hey, there you are. Hi. Hi, Michael. Hi, Dr. Sean. Hey. hey. So uh, I have two questions, but I'll start with, with just one uh, because I don't want to metop uh, monopolize uh, the time. So I understand that uh, the products have a duration of 30 days. Is that so? Me meaning like, um, no, like number of servings for each, each product? No, I thought um, from at the beginning when I started, they were saying that the, the products last for 30 days because of the bacteria being alive. No, 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 no. They have a, they have a much, much longer shelf life than that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, way, way longer. In fact, Jesus you know, Christ. In fact so one of the things that happens in the industry with probiotic bacteria is most companies will, will tell you how many they have in there, you know, 3 billion or 10 billion, whatever the number is at the time of manufacturer, because they die off slowly, slowly, slowly over time. Our numbers are confirmed at end of shelf life. You know, so we make sure that we put in the right amount, that we standardize them and, and, and stabilize them so that they have a long shelf life. So the shelf life for something like our probably most unstable product because it's a living product is mentabiotics. Okay. That probably has a shelf life of two years. We oh. label it around 18 months just so that we're safe and we're testing it every single month to make sure that we're exactly where we need to be. 
Got it. Oh, okay. Oh, what a relief. Yeah. So All don't, right. yeah, don't worry about that. Stability is one thing that we, 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 we watch out like a hawk. Okay, great. Uh, second question. Um, yes. Uh, last year I had gone to, believe it or not, a gut health symposium at Rutgers University in New Jersey. All right. So Go Rutgers. That, <laughs> so being that I had uh, also join Amari. I said, hmm, okay, I'm savvy. All right. I, I, I've done a lot of reading on gut health. I got into Amari. So there were some, there was, I constantly see this in research, some articles, and I, I wanted to know how you would address a scientist just like you who says, well, there's a controversy uh, behind, um, the role that these bacteria, these bacteria play, especially when you talk about strain specificity and the benefits that they actually uh, give. Uh, and the, some of these expert speakers were saying that, well, you can't really say that this particular strain of, for example, lactobacillus is actually having this effect for this particular condition or this particular symptom, how would you uh, answer that? Yeah, so 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 that's a that's a, that can be confusing for a lot of people, right? So if you look at probiotics in general, I would agree with that statement that there's some controversy, right? But the but the controversy is because what you really need to do is look at every single difference. To, to, to say, well, across the entire world of probiotics, you know, there's, there's some that work better than others. There's some that do, don't do anything at all. There's some that if you take them at too high of a level, it can actually induce dysbiosis in the body. So we're, we're absolutely, at Amari, we're absolutely aware of all of that controversy. And we go right to the science to say, how can we bring clarity to this? Well, we can bring clarity to it by looking at specific strains at specific levels and use the same formulas that we are seeing in the clinical trials, then it doesn't get any more clear than that. Does that, does that make sense? Oh yes, oh absolutely. Uh, I love the product, so <laughs> the, uh, I, I, I just always, I, I, love the, I love this course because I do have a medical and science background, so you're talking my language right now. Right on. <laughs> Not an issue here with me. Um, and the third and last question really um, is, oh God, it just went off my mind. I'll let somebody ask uh, a question and I'll come back. Okay. Okay. You know, I think we've got a couple more questions in the chat room. So Tiff uh, Tawada had asked, what do we have that could help with eczema? And that's what led to the inflammation or it was the inflammation that was overactive and that's what led to the immune system dysfunction so you know if you have hey, both Sean, of those can you start over because we missed you in the beginning okay so so something like something like eczema and and and, and actually a lot of skin manifestations can be somewhat infl inflammatory in nature and somewhat immune system dysregulation in nature and because the immune system and the and the and the and the inflammatory cascade are are they're separate things, but they're so closely aligned. We very often talk about them, you know, in, in, in concert with each other. You don't necessarily know which microbiome Re regulates and orchestrates everything that the immune system does anyway, including its inflammatory cascade. So you can do something in the microbiome with our mentabiotics, 
or our probiotics and have a beneficial immune system inflammation effect that will be, that will be manifested on the skin. You could also go directly to the inflammation. That's what Menta Sync does. That's what seed fiber does. Or you could go directly at the inflammation. That's what Relief Plus and that's what Omega do. You know, so if you wanted to go through all of those simultaneously, you would say, well, let's look at menta, Mentabiotics. Let's look at probiotics for the gut. Let's look at menta sink and seed fiber for the immune system. And let's look at Relief Plus and Omega for the, for the, for the inflammation. That would absolutely cover as many bases as possible or pick one and one and one and, you know, see and see how you do. Right. But we, but we definitely have products that can, that can have benefits in those areas. Awesome. And, and we, we, we got another question in the chat uh, before we jump back to the, uh, the, the voice questions um, from Marty. Can seed fiber be heated? For example, if I'm heating a food, should I add the seed fiber after heating the food? Doesn't matter. Um, so, you know, the only products that would be kind of susceptible to heat would be our probiotic product and our mentabiotics products. They could be added to warm food, but not hot food necessarily. You wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to put either of those products in a, like in a, in a boiling tea or something like that. That would be too hot. That would actually, that would actually be, be, be detrimental to the, to the probiotic bacteria that are there. But something like seed fiber is really, really stable. Uh, you know, I know plenty of people put that in cookie recipes and muffin recipes and brownie recipes. And, you know, you're heating that up to 350 degrees, you know? So yeah, perfect, perfectly fine to do that with seed fiber. Fantastic. All right. Anybody else have, have questions? Feel free to raise your hand and, and uh, chime in. Okay, Wanda, go ahead. Hi. Um, in the definition, Dr. Sean, of the probiotics that you gave, that you gave where you said that uh, it's a bacterium that induces a healthy benefit to the host, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> you also added that it also changes the metabolism that's there. So are you talking about the the the, pro the production of the metabolites from the bacteria and are, is that the metabolism that you're talking about yes yes that's exactly what i'm talking about so 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 to give you an example um we have a we have a um clinical trial that we're going to present sometime next week probably um that we did on our uh project b3 which is a combination of fundamentals vita gbx and, and all of our GBX foods, our, our GBX functional foods. What we're able to show there is, is two really important changes to the microbiome. We change the microbiome structure, meaning we change what's growing there. So we're able to show this species of bacteria went up, this species of bacteria went down, the ratio between these two different classes changed, you know, one went up, one went down, that kind of stuff. So that's the structure. That's important because it tells you what's there in terms of the, you know, what's growing. The other piece of it is the metabolism or the function of the microbiome. Now we're talking about what is that microbiome You could have one change and not the other. You could have them both change a little or a lot. And so it's important to understand exactly what's going on there. It's sort of like you could, you know, you could have a garden growing in your backyard and the plants grow, but there's no tomatoes, right? So you have, you know, you have the structure, but you don't have the function, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Thank okay. you. Okay. Awesome. Well, anybody else have any other questions? All right, Dr. Sean. Well, hey, man, thank you so much for your time tonight. And, you All know, right. Thank and, you. and hey, everybody, this is the end of Stress Awareness Month, but tomorrow is the beginning of Mental Health Awareness Month, right? So, I mean, you know, you, 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 you look out across what people are concerned about these days, and Amari is touching on all of it, right? So go out and talk to somebody about this and see if you can help somebody, okay? Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks everybody for being here. Thank Have you. a good night. All right. Have a Thank good night. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone.